Stage Dramas present The Ghost Ship. This week's front page drama, The Ghost Ship, is an original radio drama based upon the history of the Russian steamship Ivan Vasily that won international notoriety as being haunted. The story of the Ivan Vasily is to be found in a very interesting article entitled More Proof That Hoodoos Ride Ships. One of the many worthwhile and fascinating stories and articles to be found in next Sunday's American Weekly, The Nation's Reading Habit, the magazine that is read by more people than any other publication in the world and that comes to you each week as part of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. The story we are about to tell is almost unbelievable. A weird, unsolved mystery of the supernatural. A story that will remain forever an unfathomable problem of psychical research. Science in its most advanced stages has been baffled by the story of the Yvonne Dutton. <laughs> Rattle on, you mealy mouth mortal. Rattle on about the unbelievable, the weird, unsolved mystery of the supernatural, you fool. Mouth out your empty praises of the unfathomable problems of psychical research. If you do not know the story of the Ivan Vasily, why should you? You, with your infinitesimal brain that cannot absorb any more than your narrow vision can see. I, Ivan Vasily, will tell you the story of the ship that bears my name. Though she lies rotting in the harbor at Vladivostok, her keel hull eaten by the rust, her keel heavy with barnacles, her inner rat infested. Manned only by the hungry, wandering spirit of the unfortunate devils who once were her crew. I am her captain. Though she has had many a luckless man for captain, I, Ivan Vasily, was her commander. I was the sole master of her destiny. For she carried my name. But more than that, she carried the avenging ghost of my earthly body and wretched mortal soul. See, I have brought you back to St. Petersburg. Russia's window in the Baltic. See there below you. That is even for chilly iron and steel work. It's the year 1897. See how the smoke belches forth from the chimney. Hear the roar of the great machinery. Feel the hot blast from the huge open heart. What is that strange, agonized scream? A cry of pain from some dull-witted worker injured through faulty machinery. We cannot stop to repair it. We won't replace it, for that costs money, and we want to pile up great profits. That wailing and sobbing is merely the mourning of the luckless wives, mothers, and sweethearts who mourn the maimed dead. But forget them. Look inside. Listen to that group of workmen on the iron bridge there. Yes, beside the big crane that lifts the buckets of white-hot molten metal. Listen to those workmen. They're talking about me. The bloody swine. We should revolt against his tyranny. Arise and wreck this human hell on earth. He kills and maims our friends. He turns their widows and families out of the hovels he calls houses. And he starves and works the rest of us into an early grave. Aye, and now we sweat and toil to make steel. Steel for the plates of a ship that will bear his infamous name across the seas. Let us strike against... No, no, my friend. He is too powerful. He strikes me in riot and bloodshed. Days, weeks, and months of untold misery for all. Have you not the power to call out the secret police? The army? The Cossacks? What can we do against them? Better a quick death from a bullet than the slow torture of work in this inferno. Or be maimed and crippled by his broken down, worn out machinery. Heed the voice of caution, my friend. That is still another way to rid ourselves and the world of this inhuman monster. A quiet way, a quick way, with no evidence to convict him. You have a plan, Fiot? Yes. A good one, too. This morning we've slowed up the work. Soon the mad beast will come roaring out of his den to know the reason. Is that not so? Yes, that is right, Fiona. He will bellow like a mad bull. He will climb up the ladder and come roaring along the catwalk. Right you are, Alexei. Then we shall strike him quickly. Now listen carefully. First, Gregor, have the big bucket filled with the liquid metal. Alexis, swing the bucket on the crane just below this catwalk. Follow me along with it as I cross over. When Ivan Vasily, the swine, tries to pass me, I will hug you. Let's go down up there, you lazy pig! Here he comes. What are you doing flying down the floor of the steel for my ship? He's coming up the ladder. Get to your places before I pray the tail I tell you may be high. All right, Gregor. Start boring. Watch the crane. Swing it slowly, Alexis. Follow me. Run! Run to your places to work, you worthless pig! Do I pay you to talk and idle the time away? I'll teach you to waste my time. You there, get the body off. Why are you standing there staring like a dumb beast? Wait until I get over there and I'll lay your head open with this stick. Wait, I'll show you. What are you doing, you fool? Stay there. We can't both pass on this narrow walk. Stand back and let me pass. And so, they murdered me. Poetic justice, eh? That I should die in 
in the same manner in which my workmen had died before me. But I was not dead. No. My flesh and bones melted into that steel and I became part of it. The steel became part of that ship that bore my name. And so you see, that ship was me and I was the ship, Ivan Vasily. See, I will show you the shipyard where it was launched one late spring day when the ice had cleared from the harbor. My widow, my grieving widow, the newspapers wrote, was to christen the Ivan Vasily at the launch. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to perform a most sacred duty. Yes, don't get on so, Michael. Yes. This is the last official act of my widow. Tomorrow we'll leave for Moscow to be married and realize all our cherished dreams. Confound it. Why did they wish such a preposterous job on you? You never really loved them. How could anyone even live with such an uncouth bore? It's like you have to get there, Michael. Someone might hear Oh, what if they do? We showed no respect for them alive. Why should we pretend now? I wish they'd get this confounded ceremony over. Getting dizzy marooned up here on this shaky platform. Here, I think the governor is ready for the ceremony. And now, Madame Vasily will perform the launching ceremony. Please proceed, Madame Vasily. I name thee. Oh. Oh, Did not break it. They have built the launching platform a little too far back from the bow of the ship. Oh, could you lean forward a little? Yes, I will, Excellency. Now I shall try it again. I name thee. Oh. Oh. Alexander of Vasily's death was no accident. Oh, you may ridicule and call me a superstitious old woman. <laughs> you may laugh at my fears of the ghost of Yvonne Vasily, but I say it again. The spirit of that devilish fiend returned to perform the final act of vengeance upon that poor child. She was wise, that baroness. Mother of a man who was to take my place in my wife's affection. <laughs> yes, she was wise, but not wise enough. But that was not my final act of vengeance. No, there was more. Ship, my ship, the Ivan Vasily, sailed off in a blaze of glory with munitions and war supplies to be taken to Vladivostok to be stored there against the evil day of war. Once at sea... Aye, it's foul weather for you. Cold, bleak, and dirty. And you'll get your fill of it in the two hours you spend up here in the crow's nest. Yes. Oh, this will make you sorry you ever came to sea. Well, I'm going below now for a hot toddy and some sleep. Good night and good luck for you. Thank you. Oh, you're cold, Pierre. Very, very cold. <laughs> Don't look around. You can't see me. But I see you recognize my voice. Yes. It's your old master, Ivan Vasily. How well you remember. No, no. <laughs> you should. Although it wasn't cold like this the last time we met. At least not for me. It made it hot for me. Very, very hot. And now you are very, very cold. <laughs> Wet and cold both, they get a shaky. Something else besides the cold, though. A little nervous. You thought when you ran away, changed your name, grew a beard, and altered your appearance, you'd escape me. Eh? <laughs> I found you. When you were penniless and hungry, I sent the first mate to find you and give you this job. No, no, go away, go away. Of course, you didn't know you were shipping on the Ivan Batista. No. The company changed crews at the last minute, and here you are. No, hey, go away, I won't. No, 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 you're not here, Ivan Batista. It's my mind. I'm, I'm cold, hungry. My mind playing tricks on me. No, I will not listen. Yes, you will, Piotr. But there's no escape. Oh. You worked for me in life, Piotr Vadikov. Then you tried to escape by killing me, but I caught you again. And as you worked for me in life, so you must work for me in death. No, no, you are the evil thing. You run like silly, I will not listen. Yes, yes, you will. No, no. But here, you are cold. Wait, I will warn you. Even as you did me. You got to do See? Look from my fingers, rip the white hot drops of molten steel. No, no. They will warm you as I drop them slowly on your head. No, 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 no. I tell you, Captain, I saw it with my own eyes. I just climbed down from the crow's nest where you're taking over the watch. I was going aft, and all of a sudden I heard the scream. I turned around, and his body was hurtling through the air. His head was on fire. So help me, Captain, it was horrible. Like a human comet. A shooting star, that's what he looked like. I yelled for all hands. By the time they got on deck, he had disappeared. Now, Captain. You see, even in death, you cannot escape me. Your body worked for me in life. Now your spirit works for me in death. But in life, you were a disobedient workman and committed great sins against me. So now your spirit must make you mad. Tonight, you begin. I have chosen that sailor who shared your watch. Tonight, in the crow's nest, you must visit him just as I visited you. You 
must talk to him. Tell him your story. Confess all. Tell him why you jumped into the sea, as he said, like a shooting star. He's a superstitious or peasant from Estonia. He'll make a good member for our crew. <laughs> you must recruit him. See? There, he goes up the ring. Now, he's in the crow's nest. Obey me, Piotr. Go to him. There's something wrong, I tell you. I'm a God-fearing, seafaring man. I've tried to live right and do my duty. I've tried not to think of any evil superstition, but this thing, whoever it is, whatever it is, has some foul alliance with the devil. Four suicides aboard this ship in the past week goes far beyond pure coincidence. So be on your guard. Hunt it down. Find it. Kill. Destroy it. Before it destroys us all. the front page drama, The Ghost Ship, an original radio drama based upon the history of the famous Russian mystery ship, Ivan Vasily. The story of this notorious ship is to be found in a very interesting article entitled, More Proof That Hoodoos Ride Ships, one of the many entertaining and worthwhile features to be found in the nation's reading habit, which is, of course, the American Weekly, the magazine with the greatest circulation in the world which comes to you with your Hearst Sunday newspaper. presents Light, Camera, Action. Well, this week's front page drama, Light, Camera, Action, is a dramatization of a very interesting story entitled, Why a Movie Legionnaire Forsook All to Become a Real Legionnaire. This is the romantic career of a dashing, handsome star of the silent films who won fame for his portrayal of soldiers of the French...